Hi, so welcome to the next section on precision recoil curves, where we will figure out that precision recoil curves are a uh, simple to define alternative to our standard ROC curves. So as you hopefully remember, ROC curves are um, curves where we plot the true positive rate versus the false, false positive rate, uh, kind of as a uh, changing function of the threshold of our classifier, of our binary probabilistic or scoring classifier. While for precision recall curves, we plot the positive predictive value versus the true positive rate. Uh, and we'll figure out that this is a good alternative uh, or recommended alternative in imbalanced situations where the negative class is much larger than the positive class in binary classification. So let's start. I basically have already defined how the uh, plot is constructed. So it simply plots two different metrics in, in ROC. So um, again, we change the threshold in order to produce our curves. So here on the left-hand side, you see the standard uh, ROC plot, where we plot on the x-axis the false positive rate, on the y-axis we plot the true positive rate, and you get for a certain probabilistic or scoring binary classifier such a curve. For precision recall curves, we um, again choose the true positive rate for here for the x-axis usually, and then the uh, positive predictive value on the y-axis. And uh, some pipe people uh, like to use alternative names for these, so they call um, the true positive rate. Uh, taught you that before also in our chapter uh, sections on ROC analysis. Some people like to call the TPR the recall and the PPV the precision. And that's why that call, uh, why that why that plot is um, called precision recall curve. Here I have given you the formulas for PPV and for uh, TPR. So we can maybe take a look at that. So if this is your confusion matrix here, and maybe here we have the y hat, here we have the true y, maybe we have the negative class here and the positive here, here we have the predicted class, and here we have the predicted positive class, and then we have our two by two cells in our confusion matrix. Plot this guy here, what you're going to consider is a percentage in this column and in this column, and here we have now the true positive rate as a percentage in that column, yeah. And um, we have also the uh, false positive rate, which is this guy here as a percentage in this column. What we are doing in the precision recall curve is that again, we consider the true positive rate as a percentage in this column, but we also consider positive predictive value, which is given that we have predicted a one, it really is a one. So that's a percentage in this row here. Precision recall curve does not depend on this guy. So it doesn't depend on the true negative rate, but if you're plotting something in 2D, you have to make a choice which metrics you are plotting. And there are usually three of interest. So the fourth one we can always compute. We could, in principle, compute um, from three given ones. But yeah, as usually these plots are in 2D, you have to yeah, you have to make a choice which of the two you want to look at. Um, and especially in, in highly imbalanced situations, as we'll figure out in a few seconds, precision recall curves might be the better choice. So this is exactly what I want to show here. So on the left hand side, you have again, um, well, it's I, I guess we're going through that plot here um, multiple times. So we are going to study this a bit more in detail. So on the left hand side, you see the standard ROC situation for two learning algorithms now. And this is this is quite imbalanced. So the negative class is quite uh, a lot larger than the positive one. You could now yeah, conclude two things from this ROC plot for this uh, situation here that is that. And this is because both curves are somewhat close to this guy here, to the ideal point, point in the upper left corner, and both look also pretty similar. Um, so we could conclude that both curves uh, and both learning algorithms, both uh, probabilistic binary classifiers are quite okayish, and that there's also not a big difference between the two. Well, if you have a look here at um, the same situation now visualized through the uh, PR curve, you can first of all see that there might actually be a bigger difference between the two guys. But what is maybe even more important is that both are actually far from ideal. So the um, optimal point would be here in the top right corner. And what we can also see is that um, for given uh, true positive rates, so maybe we would require a true positive rate of 0.6 or 0.8, you can see that both of these learning algorithms have now PPV scores, which are even worse than a coin flip, yeah, so which are worse than, than 0.5. Uh, so they're actually not pretty good. Here's a further calculation for a similar for a similar situation. So again, 
a fairly imbalanced scenario. If we take a look here at these two confusion matrices, we can see that in both cases, we have 110 cases in the um, positive class and 10K observations, so much larger, um, a much larger set for the negative class. And both of these numbers are the same on the right-hand side here, which is also the same in both situations is the, is the true positive rate. So that's roughly 90%. So we have about um, yeah, 90 um, elements, so 100 from 110 um, in this in this column here. And that's also not changed between these two situations. Here we have 10 from 10,000, so an FPR of 0 0.001 of a of of uh, false false positives. And um, here the false positives are increased by a factor of 10. But if you kind of look at the absolute, or if you look at the if you look at the, the, the change in FPR, uh, that could look to you quite small. So the thing is the true positive rate in both cases we might deem as being good. Yeah? The FPR also kind of looks good in both situations because it's a quite small value, close to zero. While on the uh, left-hand side, we have a pretty nice positive predictive value. So if you would implement that test and assuming the test says yes, for example, you have the disease uh, in a biomedical context, then here, with um, roughly 90% uh, probability, you also truly have, you have the disease. So this is uh, considering this row here. Yeah? So we are predicting something to be positive. Yeah? So um, we are in this cell and from 110 cases, 100 are correct. Now, if we consider the same um, yeah, metric here on the right-hand side, you can see it's 50-50. Yeah? So the PPV of our right-hand side is as good as a coin flip. Um, um, and this is a bit more visible by considering these two guys instead of this and this guy. Again, similar analysis. So we see here um, one classifier evaluated uh, on, again, uh, a fairly, uh, well, actually evaluated on two situations. So in the top row, we see the situation of uh, imbalanced classes and in the bottom, we have a fairly uh, balanced situation. So it's the same underlying data generating process, the same distribution, the same classifier. But what we are changing is the balance of the classes in our test set to draw the curves. Uh, so here it's 50-50. Here it's fairly imbalanced. So here the negative class is much, much larger. If you look at the ROC curves, so the ROC curves you see here in the first uh, in the first column, you can see that they are, they are both looking quite okay. Um, while in the second column, you can see that the PR curve actually shows that the classifier does not work very well in um, yeah, the imbalanced case here. So conclusions. So, so first of all, um, what is good to know is that a curve fully dominates another curve in our C space if and only if it dominates in PR space. Uh, so that's kind of a um, kind of a similar situation, or we could say this this dominating of curves is compatible with uh, going from the ROC space to the PR space. But in imbalanced situations, it's usually better to use the PR curve than the standard TPR, FPR, ROC curve. So for stuff that's roughly balanced, rather use TPR, FPR. Stuff that's imbalanced, rather use PR. But actually, um, you don't really um, always have to make a choice. So if you're comparing just a few models on a single task, why not plot both of these curves? Have a look at them, um, yeah, study them, and think about what you can see there. If you can see a problem in one of the two, yeah, then act accordingly um, uh, in, in, in terms of your model selection and in terms of analysis and conclusions. It's more difficult or you more rather have to make a choice if you uh, want to do computational model selection, so tuning, so you want to tune hyperparameters, or you want to tune across a large um, space of, of potential models. Um, in that situation, if it's imbalanced, rather use uh, PR, uh, AUC, so that's the area under the PR curve. Uh, that's, of course, uh, computable in a, com a completely analogous fashion as for uh, standard AUC under the rock curve. And we can also do partial stuff. So we can, I don't know, fix a um, certain uh, true positive rate of, let's say, 0.6. And we can then just compute this guy as we did for partial AUC in normal AUC and normal rock.